Good morning, good afternoon or good evening, depending on where and when you are watching this newscast. Welcome to This is the Week That Was in Virtualization, Cloud and EUC, brought to you by the Virtualization Practice. My name is Tom Howarth, and welcome to the latest of our video news roundups. This week's headlines, DockerCon and NextConf. Two conferences this week, DockerCon and NextConf. Major announcements from Docker are that Docker is now available as a beta on Mac and Windows. This makes sense. Currently Docker is on the whole Linux only paradigm. Porting it to Mac will aid, will aid adoption due to the large number of technical consultants that utilize a MacBook Pro or Air, etc, etc as their compute unit of choice. And as Windows is still by far the largest implemented operating system in the corporate world, porting it to Docker Sorry, porting the Docker engine to Windows makes eminent sense, especially with the forthcoming release of 2016 with a lightweight nano server. Almost a marriage made in heaven. Further to that, they've moved in on AWS and Azure. Again, good business moves. AWS is the market leader in public cloud currently, and uh, Azure is poised to make, a, make massive noise in this space again due in some part to the implementation of Azure Stack in Windows 2016, which will enable a seamless hybrid cloud experience for the Windows users. They've also released, announced that they've released a Git style repository for Docker images called Docker Store. This is a similar concept to the app stores that were here and there to deliver things like app v packages and thin app packages in verified builds. A nice move, but I'm not not exactly entirely sure it'll drive any adoption because personally, from an enterprise perspective, I'd never really trusted the app stores to download my, my applications. I'd rather just run my own packages. Next is Nutanix.net. Nutanix's conference was this year was held in the win in Las Vegas. One major point of interest out of there is that uh, Dell and Nutanix announced a continuation of their OEM agreement. Personally, I think the jury's still out on this post Dell EMC merger, but as they say, six months is a long time in business, two quarters. Other announcements included a storage only node for Nutanix based on AHV and managed by Prism. The NX6035C device appears to be a standard node that does not service virtual machines. It runs the same controller VM, but just serves storage as part of the Nutanix distributed file system. It doesn't seem to make sense to me. Surely a better solution would have been allowed would be to allow the traditional nodes to actually use, say, SAS extenders and JBODs to expand your storage. I just don't understand how it will re how this is going to improve performance. But that said, it could explain some of the users, some of the rumours surrounding Pernix and Nutanix, as a nearline caching technology would circumvent the performance hit of remotely stored virtual machines. Other Nutanix announcements from their conference announced some ESI catch-up features like affinity and anti-affinity nodes, must or should rules for the crop, cropless X features, and improved network management. This was needed. Okay. News from our sponsors. Firstly, I'd like to welcome Christie's, our newest sponsor, Christie Software. Their business started up in 2008, and they're specialising in disaster recovery business continuity. So check them out on our on our website through the resources section, and you can head through to their their website. High Trust have released a study that indicates that uh, software-defined data center is reaching critical point of adoption. This can be found at High Trust Cloud SDC, SDDC study with hyphens between Cloud SDDC and study. Puppy Labs are getting geared up for their Puppet Conference in San Diego on the 19th to the 21st of October. Details of how to apply to get onto there is uh, found on their websites or in our event calendar on TVP. They've also released their State of DevOps report, which attempts to address some of the most pressing issues in DevOps today. And finally, Puppet founder and CEO Luke Canes has been named 
EF Entrepreneur of the Year in the Pacific North West region, so kudos to him for that. Swift Stack, they won a major deal with Bet365, land the one of the world's leading online gaming companies to provide the object storage based on Swift. They they're also the power behind Ancestries.com's Kubernetes and OpenStack based networking based infrastructure. VM Turbo have got two more tickets left in their VM World sweepstakes. They're due to be drawn this week. So if you haven't already applied, get your name in there because it's a free ticket to VM World. Well worth going. That is vmturbo.com slash VM Turbo hyphen VM World hyphen sweepstakes. Xenos, they are running a survey based around modern monitoring. Deadline for answering their questions is the 13th of July of this year. And you can find the link to enter that survey at www.zenos.com slash about slash news slash press slash modern hyphen monitoring hyphen survey hyphen now hyphen live hyphen Xenos hyphen capture hyphen critical hyphen insights hyphen global hyphen IT hyphen leaders. Easy to use to say. They're also going to be at Cisco Live in Las Vegas between the 10th and the 14th of July, and you can find them there in booth 1037. Okay, all that remains to be said is thank you for listening and watching, and remind you that if you see anything newsworthy, please send it to news at virtualizationpractice.com. Thank you, and goodbye. <laughs>